Oh, hey, welcome to our office. Oh, hi, do you guys, we did a makeover. No, we didn't. We're in Ikea's office. We are doing an Ikea As Is section challenge. One of our favorite series, so we're gonna go downstairs to the As Is section, see what we find, see what we like, see what we can upcycle it into something that wasn't already here at Ikea. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> As is. Oh my god. I don't know what we would do with it though. That was the problem. It's a door, but it could be like a picture frame. Seven dollars. We'll throw it on the, the to think about cart. A strong independent woman. <laughs> Sometimes. Charging in charge. <laughs> All right, we're back. We got some as is items that I'm very excited about. Okay, so first up, we got these. We didn't know what they were, but we think that they're like couch cushions for sure. Yeah, this one's starting to expand and I can see it becoming more cushiony. We got two because we want to make, well, we'll just let you see what we're going to make. But these were only $10. Each. Each. Not bad. To go with that, I'm going to use this. This is definitely like a couch cushion cover thing. Chair cover. Chair cover. It's this cool kind of bluey velvet. Mm -hmm. And this, I think I saw her ring it up at only Five dollars. Five dollars for a giant piece of fabric? Like at the fabric store, this much of this would cost way more than that. Cute. So, not bad. Hopefully I can make this into something. <laughs> okay, next up is this this thing, which I'm sure is like extra confusing from behind the table. But it is this floor lamp. We have some crazy plans for this, but this was only fifteen dollars for this giant lamp. It's funky. It's, it's fresh. Interesting. It's gonna get better. <laughs> okay, and then last up. We got this door panel, I think for like a cupboard or something, mm -hmm. but we're not gonna have it be a door panel. We're gonna have it be something else. Seven dollars. Seven dollars for this something else. Maybe I'll get started with this. So exciting, all right, see ya. As soon as I saw this, I didn't even think it was a door frame. I thought it was like a picture frame. And then when I realized it was a door frame, I was like, that should be a picture frame. So we're gonna be turning this door frame into a pressed glass type photo frame. We actually did something like this on our channel. We did like how to make these. So this is just a great little tie into that. First thing I'm going to do is add some C hooks on either side at the top of my frame. This is going to hold a piece of rope which will hold my frame to the wall. So to do this, I'm actually going to use a little nail and put that in first to the frame and then take that out just as a little starter hole. You could drill a hole or even just try using the C-hook as is, but it is a little hard to get a C-hook started in some materials. So with that nail hole made, I twisted in my C-hooks on either side. And now we can move on to adding the artwork or whatever you would like to show in your frame. I'm gonna be using some of these faux ferns from the dollar store. I took them off the stem and then cut off some of the bottom bits. And at first I tried taping them to the frame. I thought it would give it this cool like, oh, I just taped this in almost like a scrapbook. But from the front, I really didn't like the look of it. So I decided to instead super glue the pieces on, use the tape to hold it down and then put books on it so that they laid flat and really adhered to the super glue. Once that was dry, I could take off my books and the tape. And then the last step is to add a little rope at the top with some knots and now it's complete and ready for hanging. If you'd rather go down the more like traditional picture frame route, you could definitely cut out some kind of colored backing or cardboard and use like nails to attach that in place. But I also like it with the wall color showing through a little bit. Looks good, I like it and an easy little Ikea as is upcycle pack. Okay, so you guys saw that we picked up this really interesting floor lamp from Ikea. It's like a weird height for a floor lamp and like the actual light itself is quite small. So we have other plans for this. As soon as I saw this, the black bar of it reminded me of so many really cool wall sconces, like arm wall sconces I've seen on Pinterest lately that are wildly expensive. So I was like, maybe we can take this lamp and turn it into some sort of really cool wall light. 
I don't really know how this is gonna go, so this is gonna be a journey, but I have a, a thought in my head of how I want it to look, which is really exciting. So the first step is gonna be taking this apart because we don't need this really heavy base on it since it's gonna be hanging on the wall. Okay, so that was really easy to get the base off, which is great, and already this thing is like uber light now, which is great. So the next thing I wanna do that I'm the most unsure about of this whole upcycle is I would like to put a slight bend in this rod so when it's on the wall it goes up but then kind of comes out a little bit just to make the cast of the light go farther into the room. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna attempt to bend this slightly and I really hope that it doesn't crack the paint. Wish me luck. Hell yeah! <laughs> Successful bend. It was really easy to do. I didn't wanna do too much in case it's one of those things that you go too far and it breaks, and I didn't want to damage the cord inside, so we did a slight bend, but it's gonna be enough. So the next step is gonna to be to create wooden blocks that's gonna go on this rod, which can attach the whole thing to the wall when we're done. So I'm gonna make those next. So I'm starting with this long block of wood. I'm gonna be cutting two pieces out of it. The first is gonna be a about six inch piece that has angled cuts on both sides. And the second one's gonna be smaller that's only angled on one side. I'm using a miter saw and a miter saw box to cut my angles. Once that's done, I have two blocks that look something like this. Then I gave everything a nice sand down to make sure it was silky smooth. How this is gonna work is the pole from the light is gonna go through these blocks to help hold it onto the wall. Next, we need to add in holes for the pole to go through these blocks. So I just went ahead and found a drill bit that was roughly the size of the pole of the lamp. And I'm gonna be going in from one side of the block as far as I can, and then going in through the other side until it meets to create a tunnel all the way through the block of wood. For my second smaller piece that is only angled on one side, I'm only doing the drill hole part of the way through. We don't want it to go all the way through because this is what's gonna hold the lamp up. So my original thought was to make a hole big enough in my bottom block that the bulky part of the lamp could go in there, but then I thought, maybe we don't need this. So I'm using a hacksaw to just cut off the bulkier part of the bottom of the lamp here. This came off super easily. As I was doing this, I also separated my wires. We're gonna need to thread the cord through the holes in the blocks, but the cord of our lamp has this bulky power on and off switch, which is not gonna fit through, so we're separating the wires temporarily. Once that's done, now it's time to move on to adding some smaller holes. So I'm starting off with one sorta of small hole in the bottom of our smaller block. This is to allow the wires to escape out the bottom and it can be plugged into a wall. Next, you can figure out what screws you plan to use to hang this to the wall and find an appropriate size drill bit for that to put some pilot holes in. I'm doing two on the top of the smaller block and then two on the larger block, kind of one on one side, one on the other side at the bottom. Just make sure you're not doing this through where the pole will eventually go. Once all my holes and everything is done and these are good to go, now you can stain or paint or do whatever you want to this wood. I'm staining it in a really nice dark black stain. And I'm letting those dry. So now that my blocks are stained and dried and looking amazing, it's time to put this thing together. So we can take the bar of our light and slide it through the longer block first. And then we can slide it through the bottom block and make sure that just the cords come out of that smaller hole first. So now it's time to reattach the cords together and make sure everything is working great. Guys, okay, now that my little blocks are on and my wiring is all good to go, the last step is just to hang it by putting screws into the holes that we already pre-drilled. I love how this turned out. It's so much more simple and chic and kind of just like modern and elegant and not bulky and weird like the original Ikea lamp. So last step, I'm going to be creating a floor poof out of this pillow that we believe goes on the back of a couch. And then this slip cover, which definitely is from an armchair, judging by this like classic little arm detailing. Now, I don't have a lot of large pieces of fabric for this. I think I'm going to have to hack together some things. But once I saw this blue color, I thought it would go perfectly in the guest bedroom makeover that I just did. I actually wanted to include more floor poofs, but I didn't have enough time to make them all. So this color is perfect and a floor poof in that room is gonna be excellent. So I'm excited to make this. My first step, I believe, is going to be cutting out a bunch of pieces of fabric that I can use to sew this thing together. So I cut out all of the fabric and then after that, I cut out five pieces, one that's gonna be the top of my floor poof and then four side pieces. I'm going to now sew up all of my side pieces so it creates like one straight line. So I'm gonna sew my strip of fabric that's going to be my sides to my top piece, just making sure that the corners line up appropriately. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew all the way around that. 
And now I need to create the bottom. Now the only large piece of fabric I have left is the kind of underneath the cushion. So I'm going to be using this like brownie gray material as the bottom of my floor poof, but you won't see it, so it's fine that it's not the blue. I just pinned that up all the way around, again making sure that the corners line up. So I'm sewing up all the way around the bottom, but leaving a little gap so that I can stuff it. I flipped it inside out. And now I'm cutting open my couch pillow and taking the stuffing out of there and stuffing my pillow. So it seems like it's overstuffed, but I'm gonna be adding tufts later, so this is actually an appropriate amount of stuffed. So now when it's all stuffed, I have my little hole here, which I've just pinned up in the meantime. So then I just use a blind stitch to sew up my hole. And the next step is to add some buttons. So if you've never done this before, it's actually not that hard. You just need to buy, make your own button pack at your local fabric store. And I can also link them below for you. So you take a little piece of your fabric and usually there's a template to show you what size to cut out your fabric. You do it in a little circle and then you just wrap your fabric around the button base and hook it onto the little hooks that are on the inside. And then once you have all of your fabric shoved in there, you just pop on the top, it snaps into place and you just DIY your own button. I made four of these and the next step is to attach them to my poof. So I tied a really strong thread onto my button base. There's like a little hoop that you can tie it onto. I actually did a strong thread and I did four pieces of it. You just don't want it to snap or and your button pops off. So using a thick embroidery needle, I poked it through the spot in my poof that I want my button to go and pushed it all the way to the other side and pulled it out. And then I tied it tight in a knot while pulling, going in and out of the fabric to create a little area that is nice and tight and it won't pull through the fabric. And then I just repeated that three more times until I had all my four buttons on. This is what my pillow floor poof meditation pillow looks like. It's chic, I love it. And nobody would have guessed these were two items from the as is section of Ikea. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think all of these are super cool. They don't even look like the original items we purchased. Yay, I'm so excited to have them now. Especially that picture frame one. It's such a good hack because it's so affordable and picture frames can be really expensive for like no good reason. So mm -hmm. that's a great one. And I will be taking that floor poof home. Thank you very much. Wanted to give a quick shout out to our members. You can access all of that by clicking the join button below. We had a lot of fun today as we were making this. We were doing a live stream for our top two member tiers. We were chatting to them, showing us kind of the behind the scenes process of making this, get some help from them as we were doing it. Yeah, they saw the real tea of like how a DIY project goes. I know. She's like, just use a saw. <laughs> and we're like, true. I'm like, no, I want to use a hand saw. I'll keep it real for the peeps sometimes, you know? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. We'd love for you to be a part of that. There's also so many other really cool perks that you can access, so click the button below if you want to learn more. Yes, if you guys like this video and want to see more IKEA videos, let us know below. Give us a like if you liked it. And I love it if you saw it. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Speaking of IKEA and awesome upcycle, shout out to Emily Faith who made this gorgeous cabinet from a cowlix upcycled with beautiful drawers. We have a DIY on that. You killed this. This is so cute and beautiful.